Hey, what's up, fellas? Welcome to another video with Holmes Law. I'm coming out frequently with videos on conduit bending weekly. At least I'm trying to post them weekly, you know. Now that we're back at work and this COVID is uh, calming down, um, the videos, you know, still will be posted, but just not as frequently as they were a couple of months ago. Anyhow, um, I still do try to bring you new content every week as, as best as I can. You know, I will be dropping these videos. Another thing, um, I'm starting to do unboxings. You know, uh, every time I order new tools, um, I'll be doing videos with the unboxing as well. I'm going to try to bring you some other content on showing you all the tools uh, that I, you know, use on the job, or whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, I'm trying to just bring you different content, not only conduit bending, but conduit bending is the main topic here on this channel, okay, at Home's Law. If you happen to have any questions at all, you know, <clears throat> feel free to contact me at any one of the social medias that I post, you know, um, Instagram, Facebook, my email, you know, here on YouTube, whatever the case, just shoot me a message and um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'm usually pretty good with that. Give me uh, at least a couple of hours to get back to you. I, I try to get back to you as soon as I can, you know, uh, but, um, you know, sometimes I am a little busy. You can send me a video request if you have something that you want me to do in particular. Send me that request and I'll take care of it. Well, at least I'll try. Um, like I said, questions, anything, just shoot me the text, you know, or email. Now, let's get down to it. So, for the Green Lee hand benders, I have these deducting game values here. Um, you know, just, just so that you know, these are for the aluminum and the iron cast benders. And this is for the Green Lee hand bender only. Uh, there are other different, every bender is different, okay? But the ones that I'm posting on here. Whatever you see, it is for the green leaf bender as far as the gain value goes. Not the deduct. The deduct works for every bender. Okay, but as far as the gain goes, it's for it's from the green leaf bender. Okay? Because every bender, you know what I'm saying, the gain can change, you know, a little bit. Not much, but it does change a little bit. Okay, so. Alright, so the deduct. Okay, if you don't know what it is and you're new to bending, then this video is for you. Uh, if you don't know what a 90, how to do a 90 stub, then this video definitely is for you. Okay, so the deduct, you know, is what you subtract from your stub height. If you want your 90 stub to be at a certain height, you need to find the deduct for that size conduit and subtract it from your height. Example, let's say you have a three quarter pipe that you wanna bend with a stub height of 10 inches. For a three quarter pipe, the deduct is six inches. You would mark your pipe at 10 inches, subtract the six, remark the pipe, mark it all the way around the pipe, Place your arrow on the mark and bend that 90. Okay? Simple as that. And that, my friend, is what we call a forward 90. Okay? When you bend the 90, you're going to be facing the direction that you take the measurement from. Okay, and that's basically it. In the video, I am going to show you the reverse and the forward 90. I'm going to show you also what the gain is and how to calculate the gain, how to get the gain from any bender, and how to use it. Okay, now what the gain is, <clears throat> in layman's term, is basically the curve 
of that 90 degree bend. It's the shortcut that you're taking. It's, you know, as opposed to you, you know, bending a, 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 a right angle, you know, you can't do that, but it's, it's the extra, you know, gain that you're gaining from bending on a radius, basically, okay? That's what it basically is. So, you can use the gain to actually, it helps you to predetermine your total length. So, you know, basically in layman's terms. Okay, so let's just get on with the video. I'm going to show you all the deducts. You can take a screenshot, write it down, whatever the case may be. Keep it close to you and you can use these deducts to actually bend your 90 stubs. So, like I said, these are the deducts and the gain values. Don't forget, these are just for the green lead hand methods, okay? So, here, let's just go over it really quick. As you can see, I've, you know, copied them all down for you. Now, I've, gain I've gotten all these gains throughout my career. I've written them down. These are all values that I've gotten on my own. And, um... It's fairly easy to get, you know, you can you can calculate this yourself on the field for any bender. I'm going to show you how to do that. But anyhow, you can take a screenshot of this, you know, and saves you time, you know, whatever the case may be. Now, for the half inch EMT, you're going to see here EMT and rigid. For half inch EMT, the deduct will be five. The rigid half inch is going to be six inch deduct okay the gain for both for the five inch on the green lean bender the iron cast or the aluminum doesn't matter okay it's two and a half for the emt three and a sixteenth for the for the rigid for the half inch okay and so forth three quarter emt and rigid okay deduct gain you know, and it just goes down the list. Just keep going down the list. I gave you from two and a half to four inch. I mean, basically, these are all the pipes that I've worked, you know, mostly, you know, I, I, I've mostly used all these pipes in my career. Okay, these are the ones that I frequently use, like frequently. Okay, almost on every project that I've been on, I constantly use, I bend these. Okay, so I've given you these, hoping that it'll help you out. All right, if you have any questions and you need any other sizes, a deduct or whatever, just like I said, contact me. You can contact me on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can email me or even on YouTube. Send me a, a you know a message, whatever the case is. Anyhow, these are all the values. You know, use them. Take the screenshot and um, let's get on with the video. Okay, so what's up my guys? How you doing? This is Holmes Law with another video Coming at you with uh, 90 degree stubs Using the gain, I'm gonna explain to you what the gain is and how to find the gain for any bender uh, It's pretty simple. It's not too hard. You know, uh, you should put, grab this pretty quick uh, So what we're gonna do is you know, when you're on the field and you want to know the gain to the bender that you have in the field, you know, I'm going to show you a quick way to actually figure it out. Now, um, I advise you to actually write this down. When you do figure out a gain for a, for a particular bender out in the field, you know, write it down. You know, I like to get into the habit of having a notebook you know out in the field you know and I always carry a pen have my calculator always with me as well and I write these down this way you don't have to go and do the same process every single time you know and then when you bump into that bender again out in the field you know whether it's a Greenlee, Ideal, Klein, whatever the case may be a Gardner you know you have you have it recorded you know you have it written down in your pad on your phone whatever the case may be you don't have to go through the process of trying to find the gain again you know what i mean anyways without delay let's get into this process all right so what you want to do is 
you grab a piece of scrap piece, you know, out in the field, whether it be from the floor or whatever, whatever you want to do. If, if you're going to grab a whole length, you don't need to use the whole length, the whole 10 foot piece. You can actually, you know, try to find whatever scrap you can. But if you are going to use the whole length, a short way to do it would be to actually just like mark your 10 foot piece, you know, at 24 inches. And then I'll show you what to do, you know, the rest, you know, the rest of the way. Anyways. Right now we have a piece that is, I believe, it's, let's measure it, let's measure it out, okay, trying to grab this here, and if you can see, it says, I, I have 26 and 3 quarters, okay. Just about 26 and three quarters. So now, we're gonna take that value and I'm gonna write that down here, okay? 26 and three quarters. This pen is running out of ink. I do a lot of writing. 26 and three quarters of an inch, of inches. Now, what we're gonna do next is, we're going to bend a 90, get it as accurate as possible. It doesn't matter where, you know, just bend a 90. Preferably, you want to try to do it, you know, in the center somewhere, but it doesn't really matter. That's, you know, you just want to get a 90 and you want to get an accurate 90. And that's the most important part. So let's bend this 90. Let me bend this 90 and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so now as you can see, we bent the 90 stub. It's pretty accurate, it's right on the 90 line. Okay, now let's get rid of the protractor. We don't need that anymore. All right, now what we need to do is to find the gain, what you want to do is measure both sides of your 90. Okay, you want to measure your stub, okay, which is this part, and you want to measure your leg, which is this part, okay? In order to do that accurately, you want to get a straight edge, okay? So let's get our straight edge, let's get it lined up pretty good, all right? And we're going to go ahead and measure our leg first. Okay, it doesn't matter in what order you go. Let's just get it measured. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I don't move my straight edge. And you won't really be able to see that. So let me zoom in for you. And that's gonna give me 18 inches, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that down here. 18 inches. All right. And now let's do the same thing for our stub. Okay, we're gonna take our straight edge now and we will flip it around to the other side. Okay. Now, so that I can measure it better, I'll put it this way so that you can see it. All right, so let's go ahead and measure it. And that will give me exactly 11 and three quarters of an inch. Okay, that's 11 and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and document that. All right, like I said before, 11 and three quarters of an inch, okay? Now, don't forget, we started with a total, with your total, okay, of 26 and three quarters of an inch. We just got our two, values, our stub and our leg. 
Now, you want to come over to your trusty scientific calculator, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out our gain, okay? And it's pretty simple, all right? All you want to do is take your two values, 18 plus 11 and 3 quarters, okay? And that's going to give you 29 and 3 quarters. Okay. 29 and 3 quarters. All right. Now you want to take these two values 29 and 3 quarters and 26 and 3 quarters, and you want to subtract them. Okay, and that's gonna give you 29 and 3 quarters minus 26 and 3 quarters is gonna give you what, my friends? Three inches. Okay, so that means that your gain for this Klein bender, okay, for this Klein bender is three inches. Okay, three inches for the three quarter Klein bender. All right, three inches. Now, that's exactly how you figure out your gain, okay? Now, what do you do with the gain? There's a whole lot of reasons why you wanna know the gain, okay? You, wanna, you can use it to figure out your total length after bending your 90s, you know, when you're doing back-to-back -back 90s or if you want to do a uh, an offset after you do a 90, you need to know the game, okay? Or else you're not going to be uh, accurate with your bends, especially when you're doing multiple bends, okay? So I just showed you how to use, how to actually find the game to your bender. That'll work with any bender. I advise you to actually do that to any bender that you're not familiar with. Find the gain and record it, even if you're not gonna use it right then and there. It's better to just, when you have the time to actually just, when you step up to a hand bender you're not familiar with, just figure out the gain right away, you know? The first things I do is I figure out my radius and I figure out my gain. And then I write those down and that's it. I don't have to worry about it. You know, if I forget about it, I go back to my notebook and that's it. You know, I got it there. Okay, so let's move on. Now, let's say for the sake of the video that we want to make a simple stub, a 90 degree stub, which is one of the most basic, you know, conduit bends that you'll come across in the field. It's one of the first bends that you'll probably learn. It's the easiest, you know, it has a deduct uh, depending on what size of conduit you have. You know, for three quarter, which is what we have in front of you right now, it's gonna be six inch, a six inch deduct, okay? So basically what I mean is if you want a 12 inch stub, which, you know, comes out to, you know, whatever, six inches for the deduct, you're gonna actually come up with six inches, okay? So you're gonna mark it at six and you're gonna put your arrow on it and you're gonna bend it, okay? And it'll come up kind of like, you know, like that as a 90 degree stub, okay? Now, out in the field, you're probably gonna use 90s, you know, basically almost for everything and anything. You're probably almost always gonna start out with a 90, you know, whether you're coming out of a panel, out of a junction box, whatever, whatever the case may be. But, so it's one of the most important bends, you know, you're gonna use it a lot. You know, you should get used to, you know, knowing the, the ducks for at least your basic sizes, okay? Um, whether it be three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, a four inch, whatever. Right now I'm working with a whole lot of four inch. So, you know, I have three, I have a 32 and a quarter, which is the deduct for four inch in my head already. I've been doing so much four inch this week that it's ridiculous. But, um, 
So yes, you want to get to know those values, okay? Or at least where to find the deduct for a certain size pipe, okay? So I'm going to show you how to lay that out, which is pretty simple. All it is is one pencil mark, one, you know, whatever the case may be. Always use pencil, okay? Now, let's just say you want, for the sake of the video, we're going to start out with... Um, Instead of 12, since I already used that, let's say you want a 10 inch stub, okay? Let's say you want a 10 inch stub, you're coming out of a panel, whatever the case may be, and you need a 10 inch stub, okay? The way that you wanna do it is, until you get the hang of it and you learn shortcuts or whatever the case may be, you wanna come over to your conduit and mark out 10 inches, okay? Until you get used to it and you understand, you know, and you make up your own shortcuts, okay? You wanna make your mark at 10 inches. Now, for three quarter, the deduct is, oh, before I go ahead, you wanna make that pencil mark, I'm using a pen only so you can see it. You just want to mark it nice and dark so that you understand where, what that's your deduct. You don't need to do it all the way around the conduit just yet because I don't want you to get confused. You just want to make that mark there because that's not going to be where you're actually going to bend from. You just want that as a reference point at this point, okay? So now, 10 inch stub. The deduct is six. So you want to go and bring your six inch there and you want to mark it where it lands, okay? Which is going to be right over here, okay? Now you want to go ahead and mark that. This is a pen, but you want to use pencil, okay? Mark that all the way around. Never mind this over here. This is just some old mark that I have there. Okay? Concentrate on this pen here. All right. Now, that's your new mark now. We had it here. This was your 10 inch mark, which is what you want, 10 inch stub. We deducted our six. Okay? Gave us this mark here. This is where you're gonna put your arrow, okay? You're gonna put your arrow there and you're gonna bend a 90 degree stub, okay? Nice and accurately, you wanna use your level, torpedo level, whatever the case may be, okay? Now let's go ahead and bend that. Okay, so. We have our stub, our 10, uh, 10 inch stub. And just so that you see, I'm gonna show you, okay? Which comes out to 10 inches. Just as you can see there, okay? And while I have it here, I want you to see the bender Okay, just in case you're not aware, this is the arrow where you're gonna place your mark and bend for the 90 degree stubs, okay? Also now, an introduction to the star, okay? This is the star for back to back 90s. Or also, this is the mark of the back of the bend of the 90. I'll show you what I actually mean, okay? So I just want you to, to know and get yourself familiar with that just in case you're, you're new to this and you really don't know what those mean, okay? I'm gonna show you. So the star, this is for the back of the bend of the 90. You could also use this to do back-to-back -back 90s, okay? This teardrop on this bender, on the Klein bender here, this teardrop, is for the center of 45 degree, you know, of your 45 degree. It's the center of the 45 degree bend. We also use this for saddles, okay? 
Um, on other benders, it'll probably simply be just a notch, just like how you see here, just a simple notch, okay? These degree lines is where you bend your conduit to. You wanna actually get it parallel to it. You don't actually bring it all the way down till it touches or meets this line. You just wanna actually make it parallel. The bottom of the conduit, you want it to be parallel to the lines, whatever degree you're going to actually, okay? And, um, so we have our 90 degree bend, our 10 inch 90 degree stub, okay? And now that's basically it for the 90 degree stubs. Like there's nothing more I can really tell you about a 90 degree stub. But as we spoke about earlier, we were talking about gain. And the gain is how you're going to calculate how much conduit you're gonna need okay in order to make let's just say you want to do three 90s you know a, a back to back to back 90 because you're trying to come around it, whatever the case may be you want to do three or two 90s and you want to calculate how much conduit you need so that you can cut and act the exact amount and maybe you're running rigid and you want to cut and ream it before you bend it because as you well know it's too hard to actually sometimes to do that with bends on the pipe already okay now even if you're doing emt sometimes it's better just to actually cut the length of pipe that you need and complete your bends you know and that's it you don't have to do that after you're done with your bends you know so whatever the case may be, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out and I'm gonna show you how to use the gain. All right, the gain, I'm gonna show you. Now, for the sake of the video, let's just say we want a back-to-back -back 90, okay? That's what we're gonna show you now, a back-to-back -back 90. Okay, so, Back-to-back -back bends. I'm also gonna introduce to you the star. So let's just say that we want a back-to-back -back bend. We just bent, as you can see, a 90 on that end. Now, we wanna measure out because I want a back-to-back -back bend with my distance in between being 43 inches, okay? So I put my straight edge up on my 90 stub so that I can get an accurate reading, an accurate measurement, and I go ahead and measure, oh, by the way, never mind these markers, okay? The marker marks, don't even pay no attention to those. I'm working with pen right now, okay? And um, we wanna get a 43 inch measurement because we want our bends to be with two stubs at 43 inches apart, okay? So we're gonna go and mark 43 inches, okay? That's the distance we want our bends to be at. Okay? Now, 43 inches. I have two options here. The normal way to actually do the 90, I'm measuring from that way, okay? And whenever you measure, you have to pay attention to where you're measuring from, all right? So now, if I wanted to do it the normal way, I would go ahead and deduct six inches. I would deduct the six inches, which would be right here, okay? I would deduct my six inches. Let me just show you what I mean. I would deduct my six inches, okay? Now it's right here, okay? This mark here would mean that we would have to, therefore, use the arrow and bend it back 
to where your 43 mark was at, which is the original way that we bend a 90, which is the way I call a f the forward 90, the forward 90. The other way would be the reverse 90, which I'm about to show you right now. So our 43 mark minus our six mark plus the arrow and you bend it back to the 43, that's the regular way to do it, okay? That would give you a 90 stub from back to back with your 90s, okay? You would have two 90s at 43 inches from back to back now. That's important for you to know. From back to back, that's the way you take your measurements when you wanna do back to back 90s. You never take them from the center or from the front. When you measure your back-to-back -back 90s, it's exactly what it says. You're measuring from the back of 190 to the back of another 90, okay? So, what I wanted to show you now is, that's the forward 90. Another way to do it is by using the star. We measured all the way here to our 43 mark. This is our 43 mark. This is where we want the back of our 90 to be at. Another way to do it, okay, being that this whole length over here, if I do the forward 90, that's pretty long, okay? And it's gonna be kind of awkward and you're pretty short on this end, okay? So in order for me to go this way, I'd probably be really short. It'd be possible to do it, but let's just say you were even so like I said, okay, for the forward 90, we have to deduct, put our arrow there and bend it back like we did just now. For the star, which is the reverse method, which is easier in this occasion because we're short on this end. Okay, so to do a forward 90, you have all that over there, and it's gonna be kind of awkward coming back in this position, okay, with nothing to work with over here on this side. So it'd be better for us to turn it around, okay, and turn it around, put it on our mark, which is the 43 mark, which is our original mark, which is right here. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. And we place our star, this mark right here, directly on it, and we bend it. Now, also, when you place your star on it, let me be quite clear, you wanna put the point on it. You wanna put that point there, okay? It actually has a notch on the Klein bender as well, but they're all different. But the stars are always gonna be there on, either, on whichever bender's there. Okay, so you wanna put your star on it, and then now we can bend it from the short side back this way. And you'll end up with two 90s back to back at 43 inches. Okay, so that's the reverse method that I wanted to show you. Okay, I wanted to show you the reverse method along with the forward method. I didn't want to just give you a video with just the 90 degree stubs. Okay, now, the gain, to get back to the gain, okay, in order for you to calculate that, all right, because it, it'll help you calculate your whole total conduit length. This way you can cut a piece ahead of time of the length that you need and you can go ahead and bend your pieces. Okay, so let's get back to the drawing board really quick. All right, so let's just say we wanted to calculate our whole total length so that we can cut a piece and do a back to back and it'll be, it's done, that's it. Once you, once you cut it, and you bend your two 90s, you're done. You don't have to do any more cutting. You could just fit it right in, okay? That's why you want to use the gain, okay? So how you use it is as follows. So for the sake of the video and what we've been doing, our first stub was at 
10 inches, that's our stub. Our distance, actually let's not even go there. Our back to back stubs, we want them both to be at 10 inches. Okay. And we want our distance in between the two back to backs to be at 43. Okay. So, what do we have? We have 10. Okay, not sure if you can see that. We have 10 plus 10, okay, which is our two stubs plus the distance, which is 43 inches, okay, which comes out to 63 inches total, okay? That's with our two stubs and our distance in between our two stubs. Now, we just calculated before our gain. What's our gain for three quarter inch pipe, okay, on the Klein bender? Right here. Three inches, okay? What we do with those three inches is we deduct that for every for every 90, okay, you're going to deduct three inches. So what we do is we have three inches, which is our gain for our 90 stub, but we're gonna have two. So that's 63 minus six which equals 57 inches, okay? So that's the total length that we're gonna need in order to make a back-to-back -back 90 with two stubs at 10 inches, 43 inches apart, okay? So that's how you use the gain in order to know your total you know, length of what you're gonna need. Okay, now there's other ways to use it as well. Okay, a, a quick example. Let's just say that you wanted to do a 90, all right, and you wanted to do an offset on this side, okay, but you needed it a certain length. You know that on this side here, after your 90, all right, after your 90, you're, you're, you're you know what I'm saying, you have a gain. So you have to know that, okay? You're gonna have to deduct that three, those three inches. Okay, so we started with 57 inches, okay? That's what we started with. And we wanted a two bend back-to-back -back 90 with both of our stubs at 10 inches Okay, 43 inches apart, okay? That's what we have here. We have two 10 inch stubs, two 10 inch stubs, okay, 43 inches apart, all right? 43 inches apart, and don't worry about these marks here. These were some other marks. Anyway, yes, so 43 inches apart, okay? and we, when we did our calculation, we ended up with 57 inches. So we know, you know, that we, that we were right because I started with a 57 inch piece, okay? So, like I said, the gain, you wanna subtract that, okay? Whatever the gain is, when you, when you calculate that on the field with your bender, you want to calculate it, you want to subtract it, okay, for every stub, okay, minus three inches, minus three inches, okay? For every stub, you want to subtract three inches. That's if, for you it might be different what you're subtracting, the gain, because your bender might be different, you know, it might be three and a quarter, three and an eighth, four, three quarter bender, you know, whatever the case may be. 
but for every 90 you want to go ahead and subtract the gain okay this way you can get your total length and you can cut it and ream it beforehand or if you just want if it's EMT you want to cut it beforehand anyhow whatever the case may be that's how you use the gain all right my friends so you've completed a 90 okay by using the deduct all right you've used the star to do a reverse 90 okay the forward 90 is the is the original way the reverse 90 we used the star okay and we did it backwards it's also useful when when you're when you have too much conduit on the front side okay let's just say like you're like this and on the front side you have a lot more conduit than you do on the back side you could actually just use the reverse method in that case you do not need to deduct you simply place your mark where you need the back of the 90 to be and you use the star and you go ahead and bend in the reverse method the reverse way okay so that's the reverse 90 if you have any questions okay you can follow me or contact me on facebook instagram instagram twitter um holmes law okay any questions i'll answer them as soon as i can i'm, I'm pretty pretty good with that just give me a little time and i'll get back to you um other than that okay so you've learned the reverse method and you've learned how to use the game okay as well so other than that i think we're all caught up here we're pretty good uh what else can i do i'm coming out with other videos on how to use the green lee 881 cam track right now i'm doing a lot of work with the cam track 881 i'm taking i'm doing as best as i can to actually show you how to use that uh how to use that bender um whether it be you know offsets you know 90s with kicks whatever the case may be you know uh send me a message if you want something if you want me to show you something specifically on the green lee 881 mobile bender other than that on the video when we first started i gave you all the deducts for a few of the conduit sizes that i've frequently used i don't think i gave you all of them but you can find those out easily and i've given you a lot of the gains that i've also written down throughout the years for a lot of the frequent pipes that i use okay but i recommend you doing it yourself when you come with a bender that you are not familiar with okay I'd rather you do it yourself this way you know how to do it and all benders are not created equal some of them might be you know a little different especially different brands okay so you might want to get used to doing that other than that Holmes Law out okay so once again let's review the bender all right in case you don't know about it all right so let me tighten this really quick we have the teardrop that we use for the three-point saddle okay which is the center of bend of a 45 degree bend we have the star which we use that actual point there for the reverse 90 okay which is the back-to-back -back 90s you can use it for as well which you do also the reverse 90 it's the reverse 90 that you want to use this for okay we have our degree lines 10 22 and a half 30 45 and 60 okay everybody gets this wrong but the most important thing with these lines is you don't bring your conduit all the way down to the line all you want to do is get your the bottom of your conduit the very bottom you want to get it parallel okay to the line you want them exactly parallel 
okay? Just parallel. You don't want to bring it all the way down to the line. It shouldn't even touch the line. It should be right around, right above it. Once it's parallel, that's it. You stop. All right? Um, other than that, you have the arrow. Okay? That's what you use. Your That's your deduct mark for 90 degree stubs. Also, where you start your offsets. That's, that's your starting point for most of your bends. Okay? Uh, other than that, that's basically it. You could also charter your own center for multiple bends, multiple degree bends. What I mean by that is I have my 30 degree mark here that I marked with a marker. That's the center of my 30 degree bend. You can do that as well. It's simple to do. I'll show you in another video. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. That's the bender. This is the Klein bender though, anyhow. You are the, there's a few other different ones that might, it's basically all the same, but some of them might look a little differently, um, you know. But other than that, also, my notebook. I carry this everywhere I go on the job, okay? Like I said, I, if you've watched my videos, you know I tell you all the time, carry a notebook, a pen, Whatever the case may be, if you're a real conduit bender, I, I mean, I, I, like I fly with my conduits, but, what I, bef but before I do that, I like to take all my calculations and I like to write them all down, you know, um, it makes it a lot simpler because then I could just continue bending and then just mounting them, installing them. Uh, this is a, a concentric bend that I did um, in another job. Other than that, you know, this is what I was working on today. You know, it's just a whole bunch of scribble, but I, I can read it. That's all that matters. As long as you can read it and you understand it, that's all that matters. You know, I was doing some stubs with some four inch pipe. You know, I wrote down all the stubs that I needed. You know what I mean? And I, I, you know, I needed certain leg lengths, you know, and this way I could do all my cuts. This was for my top rack. You know, from right to left, as long as you can read it, you know, and then I had my bottom rack, you know, three three conduits on the bottom. These were all four inch. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, you know, um, as long as you can read it, you know, it's all that matters. You know, my spacing was five and a quarter center to center. You know, things, you know, you, you tend to forget stuff, you know? So I, I just, I, I write it down. You know what I mean? Um, I had some parallel, I was doing some offsets, so I had some parallel adjustments I had to make, you know, five eighths of an inch, because I did a 10 inch offset. So I had to adjust it by five eighths, because I had the five inch spacing. Uh, you know, I just write this all down, man. This way, tomorrow, I can go right where I left off at, right here, and continue on. I don't have to re-measure everything all over again. You know, it's more efficient and time-saving, you know? I cannot stress to you the importance of you writing down your bends. It helps you so much, you know, um, and you have a record of things, you know? Whatever the case is, man, you know what I mean? It doesn't hurt, it only takes you a little bit longer to write it down, and I believe it's a stress, you know? Uh, it, it just helps you tremendously, anyways. Like I said before, I'm out.